All right then. Um, so it looks like we just got a bunch of interesting stuff that just came out. Um, specifically, uh, the specialty change for Alexa, which is sounds pretty cool. And then obviously we're gonna get to see what Vivian does theoretically. Um, but yeah, so this will be a good point to decide whether I want to keep pulling on that Mystic banner, uh, the choose your own Mystic banner, whatever. Do I want to keep pulling to get the Lilius or just save those, cut my losses, and then start saving up for when Vivian comes out? So I'm glad we got it this early. Um, that banner doesn't end till the 20th, so that's like, you know, like two weeks worth of saving. I, I get to transfer over to Vivian instead. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, you know, got a bunch of interesting stuff that just dropped, uh, which, you know, my favorite type of content is looking at new characters and seeing how they might fit in and all that kind of stuff. Um, funnily enough, if Alexa's specialty change is really good, she might be, like, an insanely good unit for Wyvern. And personally, I think maybe good enough to just, like, throw on my team, even though I have, like, a bunch of five stars and, like, just everything. Uh, but we'll see. Uh it just means that more people are breaking into Wyvern easier, right? Because now you've got... I mean, your tank can be whoever you want it. I mean, whoever you want it to be. You know, just just pick a tank until you can get, like, a... Until you get a G-Perk. g, -perk. g -perk is usually the best one. But until then, you, know, you can just pick a tank. So any kind of, you know, tank could be pretty decent. Um, that new three-star we got with the sword... Um, combined with Alexa, theoretically, and then combined with the Terranor Guard with the defense breaks, and that's kind of like your whole team and then all three star available, so that's pretty cool, especially just because um, on top of that, I mean, you know, you have the the opening selective summon, and you can just get um, Sigrid out of that, she's really the best one there, and now you've just boosted that whole team setup, so um, yeah, it's just interesting, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what she does, we'll see if she's uh, I, I, I just imagine they usually, like prefer to make the more PvE related when they special when they specialty change certain things. Uh, but we'll take a look. Oh, this is even cooler. So we do have special uh, equipment, which uh, for those of you um, who've been paying attention, obviously, Aramitha has just had like a pretty decent overhaul. Not 100%. They didn't just like topple her kit, but they've kind of changed the way you use her. Before, she was just kind of there, put burns, and move on. Now, you know, she burns, she pops, attack buff, everything. Or she used to have attack buff, but you know. She's just a lot more synergetic with herself, and just a lot more fun to use. Uh, but so yeah, new artifact, new equipment. Um, while the special, while the the buffs and changes they made to her were good, um, that's the exclusive equipment was the last thing she needed to just kind of complete her package. So hopefully with this she'll be a decent unit. Um, I don't think she's going to become like super meta. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but she'll become decent, I think. So you know, that's pretty cool. Which is you know far cry from what she used to be. Um, Actually, for one, I, you know, talking completely just irrelevant of of meta and whatnot. Hopefully, they don't just like go into her kit here. Talking completely irrelevant of meta, um, Alexa was probably one of my favorite um, summer swimsuit skins. Like, I just I don't know, she just looked gorgeous in this. Like, um, over here, just going into full sit mode for that uh, for that PNG. Um, so she looks like a damage dealer. She looks like I feel like she looks like she's gonna be like a What's the word? A lighter version of... What's that green one? Um, the green mage. Uh, he's, he's small. I forget his name. Because nobody uses him. Uh, Alright, so ball in season. Let's see. Attack percentage. It's fine. Regular balls and seasons, we only use them for, like, you know, the expedition. But other than that, he doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, attack percentage isn't... I don't think I would have gone with that because he's a very CC heavy unit, but I guess we'll find out, so... Uh, skill 1... I think this is... Yes. Skill 1, yeah. Ghost Haunt. Increases damage dealt by Ghost Haunt by 10%. Um, that's alright just because he cleaves. Um, he'll do more damage plus the 14% attack. So, I mean, it's not bad. It's just, again, you're not using Ball for damage. I mean, I guess you can, but, you know, that's really not the point. Dispels one buff from all allies when using Last Requiem. That's pretty good, just because, yeah, I mean, you know, get rid of immunity and then you can apply your, your debuffs, so, you know. Increases all last Requiem's effect chances by 5%. Um, I think we're just going to see the second one, if we're being honest. Uh, yeah, because usually with Ball, like, you're going to want to run a stripper anyway. Um, but having him have, like, his own little built-in, like, strip, at least it's just one, right? It's not that big a deal, especially now we're, like, running around with a bunch of 
buffs everywhere. So it's like, am I going to get the immunity? Am I not going to get the immunity? You know, who knows? Uh, but just having one on there is, is like, infinitely more helpful, right? Like, having one on there, he's basically with this, he's basically has a free um, Aeolus Violin, and that's a pretty decent artifact. Um, so, I mean, and it's only on his skill three, so keep that in mind. But the skill three is the most important one, so, you know. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to see number two, I mean, if we're being honest. Um, we're probably going to see one a lot uh, when he's fighting against, like, if, if you just have him and you only want him for um, the, what's it called? The Expeditions or whatever. Yeah, I think they're Expeditions. If you only want him for that, um, then you're probably just going to go with the first one, just because the debuffs aren't really that big a deal and the stripping isn't that big a deal on the skill three. Uh, and if he's just a, you know, a PvE bot, then you just go with the first one, you do more damage, you know, all fine and dandy. Uh, but these are kind of underwhelming to me, at least. Um, Five percent is kind of lame, uh, and then you know, ten percent extra damage when he's not a damage dealer is—I don't know—it's it's weird. They're weird, but I don't care about balls and seasons. So if he sucks, if he still sucks, then I don't really care. Uh, so here's the interesting one. So we're getting more speed on Aramintha, which is pretty good. Um, again, she's not like a speedster, but having more speed on her uh, is always good. Like speed on CC units, uh, debuff units is always a good thing. Um, so increases ignites chance to burn by ten percent. Uh, that's fine. I think it goes up to now what sixty or something like that. Yeah, because it was fifty. I think it's sixty now. Not bad, but you know, increases catalyst combat readiness chance increased by five percent. I mean, this one seems like so far the one we're gonna use. Uh, stun chance by ten percent. The stun chance goes up to. It was at I think the stun chance is also at fifty on this. Uh, it's it's a hundred percent. For two burns and then 50 on this on the stun i think I, I can't remember the kit got changed around um but yeah uh five percent ten percent extra to stun isn't too bad um but i really do think it's just the second one we're gonna go with just because it helps her cycle better um if you get everybody with the s with the s2 the unhealable or whatever buff you need to get to get that cr push you'll go i think she goes 100 percent. i'm not sure but just having this extra cr push is not bad because you're not going to get that on everybody right you're gonna get 15 percent here and there uh, but yeah, I think this is pretty good. Um, increasing her speed with increasing combat readiness is just a good thing in general on her. Uh, allows her to put more burns, faster chance to stun, and then faster chance to pop them. So. And then, you know, faster chance to get your attack buff up, which is the skill too. I think. Actually, I, I don't know. I don't remember. They might have taken that off. Again, her kit's kind of like scrambled in my head because I don't really remember what exactly they did to change her. I just remember they gave her the ability to burn and the ability to pop her own burns. And that's really the most important aspect to take away from that. Um, but anyway... Uh, Sid being, you see, Sid being the damage dealer got effect from this, which is pretty cool because um, they subverted our expectations, right? Because Balls and Seasons being the CC unit got attack percentage. So, you know, I'm glad they're making sense at some point. Anyway, uh, has a 35% chance to decrease speed of the target for two turns when using Whirlwind. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of this one being used, but we'll see. I mean, the, the next two are on the skill three, so I just feel like the skill three being as infinitely important as it is to his kit for, like, one-shotting capabilities, uh, they're going to be probably more useful. So, decreases common readiness to the target by 30% when using hacks. So, basically, this second this second art uh, equipment basically turns him into um, Assassin Sid, which is, like, just use Assassin Sid at that point, but I don't know. Uh, grants advantageous element to hack. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, okay, so this just gives it to him all the time, whether he has speed buff or not. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I feel like we're just going to see number three, uh, just because he should always have speed buff when you activate skill number three. We're going to see number two, I mean. Because he should always have uh, speed buff when you do number two, uh, when you do his third skill. And the chance to decrease speed. Here's the thing with somebody like Sid. He decreases speed is kind of worthless because his job is to kill people. Because if you kill somebody, you decrease your speed by 100%, right? So if he put decreased speed on somebody, it means he didn't kill him, which means he didn't do their, he didn't do his job. So keep that in mind. Like These are kind of counterintuitive to like what's up with Sid. Because um, Sid's an assassin. He's here to kill somebody. And if he's not doing that, what is he doing, right? Like Why do you have him on your team if he's not killing somebody? If he's not doing everything he can to get someone killed. So all these, all three of these are kind of like garbage. It's like, oh, I reduced his combat readiness by 30% when the same argument comes up again where it's like, okay, but if I killed him, their CR would be reduced by 
The only one that helps him kill things is skill three. Um, but if he's missing, like, okay, he gets an elemental advantage right now, even without speed buff. But if he's missing a speed buff, he's missing 30% of his damage potential, right? He's missing a lot of damage because he scales off of speed, right? Because he doesn't have a speed buff. So I don't know. I mean, none of these are really good. They're just, I don't know who made these, but he, I guess he just doesn't like Sid. Uh, Iseria's back, obviously. Tenebria's back. Balls and Seasons. And who else? Vildred's back. Um, so that's fine. Uh, all these are basically just imprints at this point. Mystic Summon Rotation. So we're getting Sage Vivian with A Cart. Uh, a Cart is whatever. Um, he's not the worst unit, but he's also not very good these days. He can be annoying on certain teams if you're running like um, Green Violet. Um, Riolu and like you know whatever in him. Let's take a look at the specialty change here for a sec. Where are we? We are at ten minutes. That's not bad. So I guess this is our S three. You know I said it was a specialty change, but I don't know. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. We'll see. Ozymandias. Okay, so special Um So S3 attacks the enemy, continuously dealing damage portion of the number of debuffs inflicted on the enemy. Okay. Okay, so she gets increased attack, which is pretty good because it alleviates the need for an attack buffer on your team. Okay. So yeah, this skill is exactly the same, just she has attack buff. Okay, so that's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it is what it is. Unfortunately, the problem with this is, like, it's harder for regular... So, here's the deal. She is good... She's going to be good against, like, regular Wyvern, right? Because there's two types of Wyvern. There's regular run Wyvern, and then there's one-shot Wyvern. The fact that she gives herself attack buff is better for one-shot Wyvern, because she'll have it longer against him. Regular Wyvern, when you have to go through and then kill the mobs and then kill the Wyvern after a few turns, after some turns or whatever... Um, it's not going to be that good because she's going to burn the S3 on the wave and then she's going to have attack buff against the wave, the first wave and then like one turn gets skipped from going to the wave to Wyvern so when Wyvern comes she's not going to have attack buff. Um, so that's fine. I mean by then, by the time the Wyvern comes up you'll have S3 up again so you know whatever. It's not the worst deal but it's just kind of annoying um, how this how these things work out. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So, increased attack, obviously, uh, health, good. Crit damage is fantastic, because on Alexa, you run her on Daydream Joker, because she has the ability to proc S1 into another S1, which means with Daydream Joker, you're doing 3% per, 3% of the Wyvern's HP. Two hits gets you 6%, and that's only if you're not counting crit damage. 6% multiplied by, let's say, 300% of her crit damage is now 18% of that Wyvern's HP. In one turn, you basically took 20% of its HP off. Adding more crit damage to that is good. Now, granted, for those of you doing your math, um, you're not taking 20% of the Wyvern's HP off because the Wyvern has defenses and resistances and all this kind of stuff, so it's not exactly 100%. Um, but, you know, you can kind of, you know, hopefully that math makes sense of why you want a lot of crit damage. You want to multiply that health scaling you get from the Daydream Joker. And crit damage is really the best one you can get. Uh, let's see here. Increases attack of all allies by... Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, like I said, it's just going to help your other people do more damage and you're going to speed through the wyvern a little easier. When attacked, if when attacked, if the attacker has a debuff, increases damage... Decreases damage suffered by, what, 8, 15, 20%? Only the strongest effects apply. Um... This one's kind of interesting. It's more like because the only time the wyvern is going to hit you is going to be um, when he hits the wave, and you should kill him before then. Like if you're running hit, hit her, Terranor Guard, and I don't know some other you know damage dealer, there should be enough that um, you kill him before then. Um, but I guess it's helpful like for people who are still struggling with it because you can kill him after that um, that shield comes up. 
Sometimes, but it's like a 50-50. You're just going to die most of the time, especially if you're newer. Uh, white room, when using glistening summer, glistening summer Spike, increases damage dealt. And there you go. So this is by the target's mass health. Wow, this is so... Basically, 3% from Daydream Joker, 2, 4, 5, 8% on this S3. Again, multiplied by like 300% crit damage. And you're doing uh, like, what, 24% damage? And again, resistance is above them. All that stuff, you know, keep that in mind. That's a whole lot of damage. That's like a quarter of his health gone on an S3, right? Um, so yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty cool to me. Uh, I'm glad they, they put this on here. Um, when using Glistening Storm, critical hit. And you decrease the skill cooldown. That's pretty cool because if you crit, that's 100%, right? So, yeah. So if you crit, your cooldown is less and uh, you get to attack buff, gets to cycle through better. So, fantastic. I mean, I think that she's really good. Um, fortunately, it's kind of boring that she's only good for PvE, but I mean, I, I take that over anything else. Yeah, they're using her against Wyverns. Cold Edge, skill 2. Attacks with Cold Blade, 80% chance to inflict 2 poisons. 2 turns, increase commerce by 30%. Yep. Uh, these poisons are pretty interesting. Uh, they're pretty decent just because, again, poison scales with health, and, well, the Wyvern has, like, the huge health bar we want to whittle down, right? So, uh, when using Cold Edge, it increases damage dealt by this much percent. Uh, the actual damage of Cold Edge isn't that big a deal. Again, it's more coming from the scaling of the Daydream Joker, her crit damage, and again, these poisons and keeping the the wyvern debuffed and stuff. This is not bad. It, clearly, it's good, but you know, when using cold edge, combat readiness by additional what twenty percent. So she gets fifty percent combat readiness increase. This is insane. Like she's just really good against wyvern now. Like I'm 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 actually kind of wanting to build her now. Uh, let's go forward here. So then, lastly, he fell. So here we go. Here's the thing when we looked at earlier. So. Cuts down your dueling sword. Critical hit will activate lightning bolt and can be activated once per turn of the caster. Yep. Um, so she hits once and she'll hit twice. So that's that's two procs of Daydream Joker for one you know one hit. Uh, when using fell increases combat readiness of the caster by what ten percent? That's pretty good. I mean, just having her turn cycle is basically the what you want out of her. Uh, I think the way I'd probably build her is just as much speed and crit damage as I possibly could, just to get her to cycle more and again. Those, those Daydream Joker procs are where most of your damage is going to come from. As well as her, like, she has a lot of scaling on her now. A lot of non-attack specific scaling, but, you know, it's not bad. Um, so, yeah, take that as you will. Yeah, I think I think she's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I might even build her for Wyvern. Um, I do need... Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm kind of, that's just because I'm kind of like, what's the word, like, behind? Like, really, at this point, everybody should have a one-shot Wyvern team. Um, yeah, like, there's really no excuse you for not having a one-shot Wyvern team if you're near end game Now, if you're at the beginning of the game, Alexa's gonna be, like, you know, insane. Like, Alexa, with Cigarette, and Terranor Guard is, like, you sorted. Like, those three, and then if you get lucky and pull a Jeeper, you're basically done until you can get that one-shot team. Um, but, you know, yeah, so, keep that in mind. Um, one-shot's really what your end goal is. Um, so she's gonna be fun for a while, she's gonna be cool, um, but, you know, outside of that, it's kinda like, eh. All right, so now here's what we're all kind of here for. Um, Sage Vivian, finally we get to find out what she does. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's find out what she is. She's a mage. I mean, I think we all kind of saw that coming. Um, Ludwig, his name is Ludwig. The green, the little green mage I saw earlier. She kind of reminds me of like a ML Ludwig. Just because the S3 kind of looks like that, right? Um, and she does, theoretically she's a damage dealer, so we'll find out what she does exactly. Um, but yeah, that's who I was like, it was like hurting my brain. I saw the tree and it like it triggered my brain to like remember him easier. I don't know why. I guess he's he's because he's a grass unit or whatever. So, um, let's see. Do we get her stats anywhere? I guess not. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. So middling speed, um, high crit chance. Uh, I think yeah, she's just a damage dealer because she's got a huge amount of attack percentage. Wow, huge attack and huge crit chance. Um, and the self-imprint of crit chance, which is, like, insane. 23 plus 16 is what? Uh, 39. Wait, yeah, 39. Almost 40%. So you're at 39.8% uh, crit chance. So basically, you're basically at 40. Uh, I think, I mean, if I'm looking at this correctly, she's probably just going to be, like, 
you just dump her on a critical hit damage set or um, an attack set, maybe. I think critical hit damage set, probably. And they get as much speed as you can, and we'll see what she does. Her HP is, like, really low. Like, damn. Alright, skill 2. Let's see what her passive does. The start of the first battle gains 3 focus. Okay, she's a focus-based character. Uh, the more focus-based characters we get, the more... Um, the more Solitaria gains traction because of her focus negation. Um, so this is pretty interesting. Um, I just, you know, I, I like paying attention to how many people uh, Solitaria is good against because she's already pretty good right now if you have good gear on her. Um, and she's just going to get better the more focused people we get. At the start of the turn, gains one focus. Okay, so wait, what? So battle starts, she gets three. And then when it's her turn, she gains one. So she's already, you know, 90% of the way there or 80%, I guess. Uh, when attacked... If expected damage suffered is equivalent to 25% or more of HP, consumes one focus. Decreases damage suffered by 25%. By 50%, I mean, sorry. Uh, and then after, wait, what the? After being attacked, decreases skill cooldown of the caster by one turn. Wow, this is weird. This is crazy. Um, when more than one damage reduction effect is granted, only the strongest effect is applied. Wow, that's insane because... If she takes more than 25, she reduces it by 70% when we're adding 5. Yeah, it should come up to be 16. So 3 is 12, 15, yeah, 20, okay. So 15, so 20%, 70. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does that mean... It also makes it kind of weird to build, right? Because does that mean you want to run her with low HP so that you can trigger this effect more often? Uh, even with a 70% damage reduction, will she have enough survivability on super low HP? Um, these are interesting questions to ask. Uh, having her with Aureus would be insane. Like, she'd be so hard to kill. Uh, like, you take someone like Violet, and Violet dodges and he's hard to kill. But then he doesn't dodge and he just gets, like, one shot almost by everybody. Um, if you build them tanky enough, you can take one or two hits. But, you know, you guys understand my point. Uh, with her... She basically can't, like, you don't have to worry about dodging. She has that 70%, like, damage reduction built in. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, that's... This already looks pretty interesting. Uh, and Focus doesn't seem to do anything other than give her this. Now, yeah, so you have to make sure you stack up Focus as, as good as you can. So yeah, this is what I said. So I think Speed and Crit Damage Set are so far the strongest on her. And I think you can kind of just ignore HP on her. Uh, we'll see how that build works out, but, well, you know. This is crazy. Well, it's, it says skill cooldowns, but it's only your S3, because your S1 it doesn't have a cooldown on it. Let's see. She has a crit damage buff on. I want to make that clear. Oh my gosh, that's scary already. Attacks all enemies by bringing forth the power of nature. Increases critical hit damage of all allies. Okay, that's pretty insane. Um... Recovers health before increasing the attack of the caster. And recovers health. That's insane! She's already... Wow. This look, This is an AoE attack. Wait. No, okay, so, yeah, the, the AoE doesn't matter. Lifesteal, it wouldn't matter, but here it doesn't matter. Uh, amount recovered increases proportional targets max health. Wait, what? Amount recovered. So... Hold on. Increases the attack of all allies and recovers health before... Increase... Okay, I'm dumb. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she gets health, recovered, critical hit damage, and attack. Which is pretty which is pretty crazy, because the more she gets hit and the lower HP goes, um, the more her S2 is going to trigger. And we'll get back to this here, right? This skill, and she'll heal up again, which is crazy. Um, so I think speed set might be what you want to go on her, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, amount recovered, increases proportional targets, max health, increases attack... Increased attack effect can stack up to three times. Yeah, wow. Well, it's not even an attack buff. It's an attack increase, which means she scales even better with attack buff now. She has an attack buff on her, but it's not because she put it on. That's interesting. Um, how much damage does this do to her? That only did 5k. I don't know how, how um, that... Real lose built, but if it's reduced by 70%, we're only doing 30% damage. So we can multiply that damage times 3. He did 15,000 damage. Theoretically. Probably a little bit more than 15,000 damage. Eh. Uh, that real lose probably built really weak. I mean, I've seen real lose hit people for like 20, 20k easily, easily. Um, so I don't know. 
but you know that's a, that's a lot of damage reduction. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, because every time her S two procs, this is getting cooldown reduction. Now, granted, it's six turns, so it's kind of high, but I mean, you're gonna want to target her as fast as possible, I think, right? Given depending on what her S one does. Uh, finally, we have another crit damage buffer, um, which is pretty good. I think so far she's basically. For me, anyway, I'm going to pull her over um, Lilius. I think I might run her on Lifesteal, just because she'd be a lot of, like, so irritating, um, but we'll see. Attacks the enemy with mana and increases the speed of the caster for one turn. You soul burn, she hits everyone, and you can't trigger dual attack. Uh, this isn't too bad. Um, the speed increase is, like, fine. Uh, it just gets her to cycle better, and it, like... It makes her more irritating, right? Like, you want to kill her as fast as possible, and she keeps taking turns, and you keep getting stressed out because she keeps taking turns. Um, let's see what the S1 looks like. That's very interesting. They just showed you the, the Soul Burn one. I think I might have seen it already. Um, Let's go back to her skill, her stats here. Yeah, I think she's going to be really good. I don't think, I mean, I don't know if she's going to be meta changing, um, but certainly she's going to be, like, pretty easy to build because, like I said, she's already got probably, I think, is the highest attack stat of any, like, mage five stars. Um, maybe just any unit in the game. That seems, like, insanely high. Um, the health is kind of low, but that's, again, that's not that big a deal just because you've got 70% damage reduction. Um yeah, so if you do, um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the speed is kind of uh, iffy. Um, we still probably just going to run her on speed set. I think the fact that she gives herself critical hit damage buff makes it so that we can run her on speed set um, because we're making up 50% of that. So all you have to do is hit 300% crit damage on a speed set, which isn't too hard. Uh, it starts getting really hard picking up, you know, fighting for scraps when you get to the 350% range. But 300 on a speed set is totally doable. Uh, then obviously you get... Uh, a bunch of crit chance, so you don't have to worry too much about that. You can just start dumping like high crit damage pieces on her. Um, yeah, I think uh, like I said, I think it's she's pretty good. I think you want to avoid defense. The defense kind of stacks with your um, actually no. What you kind of want to do right on some level is put a decent some amount of health on her, and then maybe avoid defense because like either way. Reducing defense or HP is going to make it easier for them to hit that 25% threshold um, to damage her anyway, right? Uh, so basically what this skill basically means is she has at least four hits that she can survive uh, before dying minimum, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I'm probably just going to pull for her. Um, do I think she's going to be 100% meta changing? I don't know. Uh, she's probably the first damage dealer we're going to get that is going to hit this hard. Um and have survivability especially on aoe now the aoe attack i don't know how much damage that's going to do i don't know if it's going to be like insane but it's some damage the point being that you can just dump a lot of stats onto her uh and the crit damage buff is just going to boost your whole team like crazy especially now we've got a lot of these bruisers right that are scaling with health the crit damage buff is going to be like a benefit to them uh so yeah, I think, like I said, I'd probably pull her over Sage, or not Sage, uh, Conquer Lilius, but that's just me. Do I think she's going to be better than Conquer Lilius? Probably not. Um, she's still susceptible to CC. She doesn't have anything in her kit to just, you know, whatever. So you're going to have to find some way to counteract that. Now me personally, with my kit, um, I say kit like I'm some kind of LARPer. But anyway, but me with my, like, units and setup and stuff like that, Sage Vivian, Sage Vivian is probably going to be paired a lot with um, Dilibet, right? Because uh, Dilibet's going to scale insanely well with that critical hit damage buff, right? Oh, actually, no, she's not because she's already at 350, so never mind. Um, if I want to keep them together, maybe I'll reduce that um, critical hit damage by a little bit and then try to, like, rearrange those stats. But, uh, like I said, that's probably not worth it uh, just because, you know, you can't ever guarantee they're going to be together all the time. But the point being that, yeah, she's going to be insanely useful, I think, for a lot of these new builds. And I'm glad to see them moving more towards, like, traditional damage dealing. Like, making them good, because when... Making them survivable, I guess, is the point I'm saying. Because, like, you know, we, we got AOL, and she just, like, dumps her the whole meta. And then 
We have Conquer Lilius who's doing the same thing. Um, and it's just kind of boring. It's like nobody really wants to play against all this CC all the time. It's like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and everybody has control decks, right? It's a control meta. Um, not that they're bad or that there's no place for that. It's just that, like, you get kind of boring going through that phase. So glad to see a good, uh, you know, decent damage-dealing unit coming out again. Um, I, th I think one of the problems we're going to see is maybe if she doesn't do enough damage on her S1 to warrant her getting focused, she's going to not be as useful because she's going to do her S3 and it's got like a six turn cooldown. And if they just ignore her, they're just going to get peppered with S1s until, you know, she can S3 again for six turns later. Because what you want with her theoretically is them to attack her to reduce your cooldown, right? And we're just, they're just going to ignore her most of the time. Now, she's going to be pretty decent against like, you know, AOE teams where if they can AOE you for like enough damage, then you'll trigger that. But uh, otherwise, you can just kind of work around her uh, and not be too, you know, not have too big a deal. One of the interesting things about this too is just how strong it is because this right here has nothing to do with critical hit chance, right? And my point being that this is very good against like a Crow, um, ML Crow, not that he's going to be up against this, but like a Crow. Um, we just got Eula. Uh, what's her name? Um, Hua Young. Her damage is going to be kind of not, I mean, not that like, not that like, uh, Hua Young's going to be particularly good against her. Hua Young's just good against everyone. Um, but Hua Young's damage is also reduced by this, right? Uh, so just all forms of damage reduction is like, this is insane. This is probably like the strongest thing we've, we've seen in that terms, in terms of that lately. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Does this work? I wonder if this works because Hua Young S1s and then her S1 has like a built-in like extra damage proc. And then if you have something like, um, I run obviously on, I run her on a beard's tooth. So triggering both of those does a lot of damage. If her HP is too low, I wonder if you can just kill her with that extra proc, or even take uh, what's his name? Um, take Ramiru. Does Ramiru's uh, S3 additional damage proc affect this? How does that work, right? Do you reduce that as well? Does that take up a focus thing? Very interesting. We'll, we'll have to see how this works out. Um, but yeah, right now it feels a lot like Ramiru is going to be a huge counter to her if that, because you're going to hit her. For like 10k, she's going to reduce that by 70, so you're hitting her for 3k, and then you get the extra 10,000 damage proc. Plus, you stole her crit damage buff, right? Um, and then like, you know, you AoE her. You you hit her with the second damage proc, and that's 13k HP, uh, 13k damage. Um, with her HP being as low as it is, I don't know if you're going to build her with enough HP to survive that. But it is a it is something to, to keep in mind. Um, so yeah. Uh, what else was there? Yeah, I think that was it. Um, we, we went over the units. Like I said, I'm, I'm most excited for Vivian. I'm probably just going to stop pulling on the banner. I think to, to keep myself from pulling on the banner, I'm just going to pull for uh, ML Kawana right now. Use my use my um, my coins to get ML Kawana. Uh, and then just start saving up my bookmarks to get... Because I'm like 47 summons off uh, the regular Mystic Pity. Uh, so when she comes around, I'll hopefully I'll, I'll be able to pull her by then. Because we have now until the 21st to get bookmarks. And then the 21st and onward while she's here to get her. Um, so that's going to be what I'm going to be working on. I have like two. I think I have two Vivian copies to give her two imprints. But it's nothing too major. Um, yeah, like I said, I think she's going to be good. But I don't think she's going to be like insane. Um, not on the level of Lilius. Uh, the new Conqueror Lilius, I think. Um, well, that's just me. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to, again, as always, like, these are just kind of predictions or just early impressions. Um, we can't really know until the meta takes hold of them and we start finding, like, builds. Or maybe it's like, oh, this unit works insanely well with this other build. Then we didn't really think about that before. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Uh, till then, hopefully you guys uh, make a decision now whether you want to keep pulling on that banner or pulling on or saving for this banner.